Hey there, folks, and welcome to part two of the Italian uh, build log. Now, last week, or the tail end of the week before, and then the week before that, you know what, don't matter too much. Uh, Corona got into the house, and I was quite lucky. I managed to dodge it. Mrs. Sledge and I were at opposite ends of the house, and uh, yeah, despite the fact that, technically speaking, I had a lot more hobby time for myself, um, you know, the motivation does go out a little bit when you're trying to look after somebody who's really not well. Um, a few folks did point out and say, you know, um, hope that she's well, she's doing much better. Thank you very much. And she did actually appreciate hearing from folks wishing her well. So the bonus of that, she's better, I'm fine. So the last couple of days I spent priming the Italian stuff. I haven't done really anything else. But that did give me an opportunity today to record assembling one of the metal artillery pieces. Now, if you are like me, you've been putting together toy soldiers since Adam was a cowboy, you're probably not going to have any trouble sticking together metal stuff. And if you are familiar with this, it's there's not going to be anything in here which is particularly groundbreaking to you. But something that I do see quite regularly in the Bolt Action Facebook group, for example, is folks saying that they're either they're put off, they're intimidated, or they just don't like assembling metal miniatures. That's kind of a shame, because there are a lot of really useful units that are only manufactured in metal, and mostly it's because of the cost thing. You're only going to have one or two of them in your army, and it's not cost-effective for Warlord or whoever else to make these things in plastic. Um, but you're probably still going to want one, and artillery is a really good example of that. So I've got the uh, Italian artillery I mentioned in the last video. I was really looking forward to sticking it together. Well, I'm going to do that now. I'll show you some of the tools that I'm going to use and one or two little tips along the way for how to make this a little bit easier. Um, like I said, if you're an old hand, there'll be nothing in here that's probably going to surprise you too much. But if you have been put off before starting an army or picking up one of these units because it looks like it's going to be scary to assemble, I swear to you, it's not. So stick around, I'm going to flip the camera around, and I'm going to stick together some toys. Okay, in front of me I've got a selection of the tools that I use. Uh, these are all nice to have. Uh, there are one or two obviously things like your files, which are a necessity, uh, but for the most part these things are up to you. What you want to use, where you want to get them from, um, it's, it's really your call. Best thing to do is to search Google for you know, modeling supplies, say clippers or what have you. People will be able to point you to what works for them. I'm just going to show you what I've got. So when it comes to assembling metal miniatures, don't use, like I've got two pairs of clippers here, don't use your nice clippers that you use for things like plastic and resin because you're going to bung them up real quick and wreck the insides. So for example, you'll see here on my metal clippers, uh, they're pretty busted, <laughs> but they still get the job done for taking apart slightly larger pieces. Uh, there comes a point where you're going to want something like a jeweler's saw or similar to get through really large metal pieces, but for the sake of assembling artillery and uh, similar like that from bolt action, you're not going to need that sort of thing. A pair of clippers will be just fine, but make sure you've got the busted ones. Then a set of good files. Uh, these ones actually come from the Army Painter. I think you can probably see that there. Uh, I've had these for about six years now, and they they haven't let me down, so they, they come recommended. Uh, something which has got a few different shapes is going to be quite handy. Um, you've got obviously your flat and your round files, but then there's this fella who is flat on one side and then has kind of a curved uh, edge on the top. This is super useful. I think this is the one that I actually use the most. Now on the subject of filing, I've got here, this is a Ravel sanding stick. Uh, it's basically an emery board, and you'll see that this one's seen better days. Uh, but it's nice to have something a little bit lighter, uh, less heavy duty than the, the files. This works quite well for getting in and buffing around like faces and things like that. And on that note, I've also got a little scrap of sandpaper here too. Uh, on most metal miniatures, I'll use a 400 to 600 grit. This is 400 here because it's just for buffing off the uh, the edges. On resin or similar, I'll use 1200 to even 1600 grit. You know, the finer you can use on resin, the better. But for our metal miniatures, this is going to be plenty. 
And then finally, glue. Uh, I tend to prefer the uh, gel type super glues. You can assemble these things just fine with ordinary super glue, but something which doesn't uh, dribble around and get into everywhere, glue your fingers together. Glue that stays where you put it is going to be super helpful when you're assembling these miniatures. So I am doing this blind. Um, I haven't opened, haven't opened this one yet. Um, the new blister packs that the Warlord stuff come in are actually quite neat. Uh, they don't, they don't let stuff jiggle around as much as the old ones did. And uh, you can see, very well packed. I've struggled a little bit with this. There we go. All right, let's tip this sucker out. One of the little things I love that Warlord does is these packer cards. Uh, hi, Stu. <laughs> okay. So we've got here our, our artillery piece. This one actually looks quite simple, to be honest. Uh, we'll put the crew aside for now. And the base I'm going to hang on to for another project. Uh, I've actually got my own base that I have 3D printed. I'll show you that when we come to basing this thing. And so we have our artillery piece. Now this one really is a lot simpler than I thought it was going to be. So that's, that's kind of cool. Uh, you can see... Some of the parts are a little bit wonky, and that's just the nature of metal being packed as it is. Little, little bit of pressure, we'll straighten that out, no problem. Uh, but let's have a look at these things here. So, some of the casting vents where the metal is poured into the mold are going to leave these big hunky chunky things. Most of the time, oh, they're just wiggled straight off. Uh, but if you do get much thicker ones, this is where your clippers come in handy. Uh, I'm going to try and wiggle this. Yep, that one's not going to wiggle. Let's clip this sucker off. And I'll also use my clippers to get rid of these bigger uh, vents as well. And of course, while they are going to be much easier to assemble, don't forget to do this stage on your crew as well. Now on some of your metal casts, you're going to have these little bits of flash where the two parts of the mold are pressed together exactly the same as you would do on a plastic kit. All it's going to take is a little bit of work with your file, and that'll come straight off. So now comes the fun part of going around all the miniature and filing those bits smooth. <laughs> now, truth be told, depending on how fine and thin those are, you can actually just trace them off with a knife. Uh, I wouldn't ordinarily recommend using a knife on your metal miniatures because it will blunt the blade very quickly. Uh, and the temptation will be there to apply way too much pressure. And that is how you're going to end up cutting yourself. I tell you that from experience. <laughs> okay, so I've taken about 10 minutes. I've filed all of these things flat. And there's now no mold lines on this uh, artillery piece or the crew. Now comes the fun part, this assembly. But before you crack out the glue, make sure that you are dry fitting and having a look that you understand how the, the kit actually goes together. Now one of the downsides to these little metal blisters is ordinarily they don't come with instructions. So you're going to have to do a little bit of detective work to figure out how exactly they're supposed to go together. Now luckily the uh, pictures on the website are ordinarily quite a bit of help in this. Or you can even look up what the real world uh, versions looked like and that'll give you an idea of where things are supposed to be. So for example, this great big wallop in gun shield here I can see that it's supposed to fit against the carriage, and then there'll be this block in the center here to glue together. Uh, ordinarily, I like to put the, the wheels on a gun carriage first, uh, but I think in this case, it's probably going to be safer to assemble this bit and then put the wheels on. Yeah, okay. Now, I know my contact points are going to be along the sides of this block here, and at the front of the gun shield where the carriage is actually going to mount up against it. So I want a little bit of glue in those areas. And you'll see the gel stuff stays where I put it. Just magic. And then after dry fitting it a few times, I can just slide that in and hold that in place for a few seconds. Now something that's just occurred to me as this is drying uh, some folks will use a super glue activator. You can find those in quite a few places. I know Army Painter does their own version. Um, I tend not to like using them very much personally because I find the joints can end up a little brittle. Uh, but what they do is you put on the super glue and then you sort of spritz it with this magic juice and it hardens the super glue instantly. 
So for tricky pieces, parts that you're really struggling to get to stick, I can see the use for it, uh, but for bigger, chunkier bits like this where I'm not really having any trouble, I'm not going to use it. But it is a tool that's out there if you've not come across that before. All right, now I'm going to jam on my wheels. So a little bit of this goopy stuff on the axle. And that should, being as I've dry fitted it a couple of times, just slide in there. Give it a twirl. There we go. Now in the carriage, there's these two little hollows, and on the sides of the gun, there's these two little pegs. So I'll let you guess what we're going to do there. Um, I've figured... If we, oh dear, don't tell me I should have... Okay, no, we're good. Okay. Now I dare not touch anything. Uh, having just said I don't like using super glue activator, I've actually come to a situation where I probably really should have used it. Uh, the gun itself, with those little uh, roundel bits that it's resting on, they aren't a huge contact point, and the base of the gun itself is now just resting on the carriage. Uh, the glue there is going to take a little bit longer to dry, so you see I've got the, I've got a file and the clippers weighing it down, holding it in place so I don't have to sit here for half an hour. Um, yeah, sometimes you've got to improvise. <laughs> Now just as that finishes off drying, I want to touch on the bases very quickly. On the left here is the 40mm, or I think this might be a 60mm base actually, from the kit itself. And on the right here is one of my 3D printed bases. Now the size of them does not actually matter at all. In bolt action terms, you don't need to base your guns. Your artillery is a single miniature, which then has the guys all sort of standing around it within, I think it's a 2 inch radius of the gun. So... As long as the men are based, then they can be taken off as casualties in the normal way. Um, most folks I know, though, will base their artillery because it gives you a, an opportunity to do a cool little, like, active diorama sort of thing. Um, I'm going to do that. I am going to glue my crew to the base and just keep track of casualties with a dice or something because I like the look of it. And it gives you a little bit more security uh, while you're moving it around, whether it's on these round bases... Uh, if you can't 3D print your own, then you can find uh, MDF manufacturers. This is 65 by 115 millimeters, and the size of it is based purely on the fact I don't want the gun's barrel to extend over the end of the base. Uh, if it does, it's more likely that I'm going to hit it on scenery or stuff like that, whereas if it all fits neatly in this footprint, I can plonk it down and I know it's going to be safe. So let's glue it down. Now, same principle applies. I have roughed up the surface of the base with a bit of sandpaper before doing this. I'm going to add some of my gel type glue and then wiggle it into place. Now, I can sit this one quite far forward on this base and uh, let's get it central there. Before, oh, okay, before that sets, <laughs> act quick. I have also quickly popped on this crewman here because I had the glue out. And after checking on the website where he's actually sitting, I figured I'd put him on before I forgot. <laughs> I've also been, you'll see, quite shameless with the amount of glue that I've poured on under the wheels. Once it's on and started sticking, you can feel free to really gum it up. Because once we base this, um, mine in particular have quite rocky bases. So it's going to obscure any of the detail which is sort of gummed up with that extra glue. I would rather it stick and stick forever than have a perfect base which doesn't, you know, doesn't hold it properly. So what I'm going to do now is start sticking the rest of the crew on. And uh, after looking at the website, you know, I can see where most of them are going to have to end up going. And at this stage, what I'm going to do is use just my ordinary super glue. Let's get that in a little bit on the base. And yeah, from here, it's dead simple. You know, we're not having to worry too much about, uh, load-bearing metal parts or anything. It's just sticking guys down. So, nice and quick. And there we go. Start to finish, metal artillery. So a few notes there on ways that you can make it simpler for yourself. One final note is the fact that I have glued my guys down to the base before I prime this miniature. Now, I'm quite lucky in that my guys are going to be primed in the same color that I want the gun to be primed in. So it's not going to matter one way or the other. Uh, painting them, I'm going to be able to reach everything quite easily, but if you're concerned about being able to reach things, or if you do want to prime your dudes in a completely separate color, then of course, 
Prime the gun, prime your dudes separately, and you can paint them and then glue them to the base. It's up to you. So if you've never come across metal artillery, you know, large figures like this before, hopefully that answers a couple of questions, makes it a little bit less daunting. Uh, they are always really cool. They're such neat little centerpieces that you can pop at the back of your army and spend a bit of time on with the base. They're going to look really cool. I'm, I'm really looking forward to painting this one, and I think it's going to be a pretty handy addition to my Italians. So let me know if you found that one interesting, and uh, if you're following along, you know, anything else that you're building at the moment as well, I am always keen to hear. Thanks for your time, folks. You all enjoy the rest of your day.